videos. Um, great. So thanks. Uh, thanks for having us. Um, we will get started here. Uh, Kate and I uh, work. Well, I think we met actually uh, maybe before this, but we're both co-chairs of, um, of working groups under the NTIA multi-stakeholder process that just spent about three years working on uh, SBOM, Software Bill of Materials. Um, so I'm uh, one of the co-chairs for the Framing Working Group. Um, my, my day job, which is related, um, is at the CERT Coordination Center. Uh, that's part of an FFRDC, the Software Engineering Institute, Carnegie Mellon University. We do a whole bunch of software security stuff. I mostly work with uh, security defects, bugs, and vulnerabilities. I care about packaging and ecosystems and inventory and supply chains because when we go study vulnerabilities, it's always a supply chain problem as to who's affected and how, uh, and that's where my interest comes from. Uh, Kate? Yeah. Um, I, so Art was basically co-chairing the framing group, which was defining what the minimum elements were going to be for software build materials and tackling the the hard problems. I was involved with the formats and tooling working group where we were trying to look and understand what was actually out there and what can we build on. And so various survey documents got created. My day job is I work at the Linux Foundation um, working on embedded systems and making sure we can start to get them dependable. And part of that dependability is actually knowing what we actually have in our software. So hence working with packaging and um, working with all of the getting things transparent and being able to trace things through the supply chain is pretty key to me. So if you want to go on to the next slide, Art, that'd be great. Okay. Thanks. So um, why we wanted to um, have S-bombs out of, of the building and packaging is actually that's where the source of truth is. In most of the other talks, you'll see there's intermediate information that's getting created and the accuracy is highest when it's coming through the builds. Um, taking the sources and trying to extrapolate what might be called or taking a binary and trying to reverse engineer it um, there's always a lot of ambiguity showing up and whereas if we can get things through the build, um, then we feel it's probably the most authoritative at the time. So it's also probably the least cost. Now the challenge for us is going to be getting things standardized. Um, you know, everyone has done things in a little bit of a different way. And what we're trying to figure out is can we sort of agree on some common semantics or what things should roughly be? Um, as we populate these fields. And we kind of need this for as we get off into the areas of like the reproducible builds, um, being able to have that full level of transparency and being able to do audits on things and support some of the high assurance and critical infrastructure use cases. Some of the things I've been looking at are from the, the safety certification, you have to know your full environment when you built your image because that is recognized as a factor where things could change. So if we move forward a little bit, um, you know, well, um, what's there today right now, I think everyone will pretty much agree is fairly fragmented from one packaging system to another, from one environment to the next. Um, in the NTIA, those, those three years of discussions that Art was referencing <laughs> took us about um, that long to get to a set of minimum viable elements for these S-bombs. And that's in the framing discussions, you know, it's sort of like, okay, what is the absolute minimum we need? Well, an absolute minimum we need is, um, understanding, you know, who's created this S-bomb and when it was created, timestamps. <laughs> um, but then, you know, who supplied it and, you know, what is the component that you're looking at and what's a version string? And there's different ways of representing identities and all this information on a continual basis. So we, when we start looking at the ecosystem as a whole, we're seeing a lot of variants coming in here. Then one of the things we felt both Art, Art and myself feel pretty strongly about us. We do need to see a component hash, so you know if something's been tampered with underneath you, um, and that being a hash on an element, if it's at all possible to generate some sort of unique identifier so you know you're talking to the same thing. And then um, the relationships, what's a dependency? What's your primary object? How much do you know and, none, and not know and so forth? So these are things that got you know um, fleshed out in the discussions and have been documented fairly extensively now in the framing document. And the second edition of that document was just released. There'll be a link on the next slide. <laughs> We're still working on the second edition of that survey document I was talking to, but hopefully that will be coming out shortly in the next month or so too. And so one of our open questions right now is can, when we are working with all these packaging ecosystems, can they actually supply those minimum elements in a way that 
when we summarize them into documents from you know one ecosystem to the next ecosystem, and the, the tooling is working out of this common format, it has a clue of being able to pull it apart and understand what's really there. And if we can move forward, there's a lot of different ecosystems out there. Um, I spend a lot of time in the embedded ecosystem, um, working with things like this, just like Yocto, um, but also working with bare metal, um, you know, pro IoT projects like Zephyr and the RTOSs. Um, there's our traditional desktop with Linux and a variety of environments there. And obviously we're getting into the clouds and as we just heard about unikernels and other things. There's, um, you know, at the end of the day, these are all executables. They're all working in different environments. Um, we also have different um, behaviors happening in our language ecosystems between Python and Go and, you know, the C++ one, which I'm familiar with, but also, um, you know, the Java and the Node and so forth. So we've got that variety in that space. And then also each of the distros is doing things slightly differently too. So a challenge for us is as we look at those basic fields, you know, what is the guidance that should be given into how to express versions, how to express um, the identities? Who's the supplier? Um, you know, we agreed on these fields, but then how do they get populated in a standard way? And if we move forward, um, this slide is from Philippe Ambertin. He gave this recently, and I thought pretty much summarized it up that, you know, um, there is a lot of ways that people are referring to versioning at this point now. Um, they are ambiguous from the perspective of, you know, whether we're talking about vulnerability, whether we're talking about package, um, is it fully semantic version? Is it greater than or equal? Um, you know, what symbols are being used? And then how do we actually get that translated into versions? So when you have a dependency on a package, you can say it's this version or later. That is hard to say right now in this in those minimum elements. And as we extend this out, we'd like to make sure we encompass um, and can represent most of what's happening in these different ecosystems. And even more than versions, um, one of the other things we like to try to capture in this on the next slide is you will see that there's many, many, many ways of dealing with licensing <laughs> in these things. And so um, part of open source is it's the license that's in the open source. And um, figuring out how to come up with the versions is, um, as Philippe has nicely articulated, there's, the SPDX expressions are helping us in this direction, but not everyone's using them consistently, as well as there's a variety of other strings and lists and approaches being taken in the different packaging ecosystems. If you go on to the next slide, you'll see some more. And, um, you know, we've also got, you know, references to versions of licenses and so forth. And next slide, you'll see a few more. So as you can see, there are very many ways, very, well, there's a lot of different ways that we're dealing with the licensing. And, you know, it's not part of the base elements, but it's a recognized use case that people are going to want to carry licensing information along with the identifiers of the packages and the relationships. But then one of the other areas that we we're going to be wanting to carry along in some cases you know, is referencing and um, collaborate, you know, collecting it to the vulnerabilities. And so I'll turn it over to Art here to go into some of that challenge. Great. Um, thanks, Kate. And again, as I sort of covered up front briefly, uh, I come from security bugs and vulnerability land, um, backing my way into SBOMs and supply chain and, and packaging and deployment and inventory management and asset management. Um, very briefly, again, just, just to, to touch tie back to that, um, I talk about coordination as uh, commonly, not always, uh, work that happens before uh, a patch is released publicly. And you know, lots of open source projects simply don't have the private option. It's just you file you file security bugs, you get things fixed. Great. Uh, I can tell you that when you try to do this for every software ecosystem on the planet, um, not everyone uh, is as open. As, as some projects are. So um, there's there's sorting out who's affected, who to tell, how to run the embargo, nasty business, but uh, we work on that. Um, there's management after the fact, finding all the systems that, that might be affected. Um, we're talking here about, you know, can, can, can packaging systems produce SBOM information? Does that, does that help collect, um, you know, inventory at scale? That's one giant set of data that's a very hard problem to work on. We also have need for the list of vulnerabilities. The vulnerability catalog is its own uh, problem, smaller scale, but still quite quite a large scale problem. Uh, if you're familiar with CVE, common vulnerabilities and exposures of all 
that's a very, very widespread uh, catalog. There are more, as, as we'll see here. Um, this stitching together, right, the mapping of a vulnerability affects a component somewhere in a supply chain, somewhere in an ecosystem. Um, that mapping is typically manual. Um, often suppliers, vendors, developers, maintainers do that work. They, they confirm that a vulnerability, vulnerability does affect something. Um, uh, it's not yet clear that, that a vulnerability in an upstream component does or does not affect the downstream or the caller. Um, there's evidence to support that it sometimes does, sometimes it doesn't. Uh, unfortunately, so far, it seems to be um, a very case by case, uh, case by case issue. So expensive, fairly manual process. There's automation here, but you know, these aren't the sort of things you wanna leave up to too much guesswork. Is this affected by the vulnerability or not? Um, you really don't want a false negative uh, situation. Um, some of the slides from Philippe covered this already, but just as there are many ways to identify packages uh, and versions, there are many ways to identify vulnerabilities, different ID systems. Um, there's something new, I think, from, from some Google folks, osv.dev uh, has an identifier, a way to deal with identifiers. I've already mentioned CVE, which is somewhat of an ad hoc standard, um, but not certainly not global. Um, lots, very common to reference, just commits or bug IDs or things. Uh, there's some work a colleague and I did years ago, and it, 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 it's very experimental and didn't really go anywhere, uh, partly intentionally, but we call it VxRef, which is basically a structured way to reference, to cross-reference things. It's a fairly basic sounding thing. It really is basic, but instead of trying to pretend anybody would follow a global, a global vulnerability ID system, could we at least get them to all cross-reference each other in the same way? Then you could go assemble those references and figure out that CVEA is, uh, you know, VUXML vulnerability B. Um, lots of formats as well as IDs. Uh, OSV.dev also has a format. Uh, VUXML is an old favorite of mine. I think it is FreeBSD specific, but it works for them. Uh, CSAF or CVRF, Common Vulnerability Reporting Format, um, has gotten some uh, attention recently, but it's sort of more of a advisory format and less uh, sort of a data record or for presentation than a data format. Um, CVE itself that I keep talking about has a, uh, a JSON format and a new one coming out. Um, I'll say this about the, the CVE JSON format. It is at least driven by the need to work and be in production. So uh, things that are in there are, are pretty well uh, determined to really be needed. Uh, nonetheless, a lot of these vulnerability formats devolve to uh, here's a field where you type in the description of the vulnerability, which, you know, prose text field is not the most uh, most useful thing for machines to, to process. Um, back to Philippe again, we, you know, we covered this software names, package names, uh, ranges are hard. Here again, vulnerability names. Um, everyone's got their own vulnerability ID and name. Uh, so a mess, a mess there. Multiple, you know, re repos and version control systems with their own their own coordinates as well. Um, briefly beyond vulnerabilities, uh, you know, my, my, my even higher order mission is defense blue team protect, uh, the U S federal government, who is one of my big, uh, big sponsors cares about critical national infrastructure, public safety. Um, and guess what? All those infrastructures use software. They all have to deal at the very least with vulnerabilities. Uh, and, um, they need to deal with other things that they might be able to figure out from inventory and SBOM and better understanding their, their own supply chains. So one of our other questions is beyond sort of helping, you know, if we have baseline SBOM and inventory and we can track licenses with that with some additional data and we can track vulnerabilities better with some additional data, what else do we want to track? Uh, and a lot of critical infrastructure discussion, um, people will say that they want, usually the, usually the, the framing is high assurance uh, in their supply chains and software builds and everything that went into producing the safety critical component. Um, what does that really mean uh, is a longstanding uh, subject of, of discussion. Um, but, you know, some, some of the current thinking is uh, reproducible build is certainly seems like a, uh, a sound idea. Um, you need to track configuration information, what build tools were used, what versions, what build settings, um, how is the thing being uh, executed or what's its context and environment? Uh, 
all of these things matter. Uh, and there's at least this desire to have this, this, this very high assurance for safety critical things. Um, but again, what's practical, what's possible, what's cost effective, and what is actually you know, safety and integrity effective as well. So what beyond vulnerabilities and licenses might we be able to capture that helps uh, critical infrastructure and this sort of assurance, uh, assurance thread? Um, and really, you know, we, we have 20 minutes here and I know we're close to time, but uh, Kate and I, you know, planned out this talk. And uh, despite the typo, I, I see now, of course, um, um, we're very curious what the package manager, package format, packaging community, uh, all of the different tools and systems, um, what they provide um, in terms of that, of that baseline uh, SBOM information or additional information what they might be willing to provide, um, what, what things are common, but you know, is it the same name for the field? Is it sem uh, semantically the same? Is it not semantically the same? Do we need a Rosetta Stone, Rosetta Stone sort of translation table? Um, are there things that are not covered? Uh, are there things that package managers do regularly that they have to do that we've, we missed entirely in the SBOM work? Um, you know, certainly we need identi identity and, and versions and dependency sorts of issues, but um, version, version range, uh, dynamically building things. You don't know the version in advance, but I'll take anything greater than 5.0 will work. Um, and uh, the SBOM work has a very, very simple relationship uh, type, which is simply sort of the upstream dependency relationship. Something was included in something else. We suspect that uh, that very simple relationship type is not going to cut it. Um, for more for uh, for more actual use. Um, so really, here I'm going to just go back for a second and uh, give, give Kate a chance to chime in too. But we we really were try, trying to ask uh, of the again. I'm going to wave my hands. If there's a word for this community, I'm going to call it package manager or, or package tool community or package format community. Um, we're happy to do some homework. We're happy to uh, further this discussion. Um, we're happy to look up what we can ourselves, but um, What's common across package managers? What's not common? Is there alignment with the SBOM baseline? Is SBOM baseline missing things? Is there awesome stuff in the package manager world that would help that, that we just weren't aware of at the time? Um, Kate, please. No, no, I'm so this is, you know, if we're interested in anyone who wants to work with us on helping to define this and effectively survey what's out there and figure out what we should start to have. The semantic meanings be equivalent for if they're not going to be actually equivalent um and so if there's open questions uh we're certainly interested in them if you want to slip to the next slide art we'll just serve um there's multiple file formats out there right now um and all of these are able to represent an sbom probably the spdx and cyclone dx have probably the most active communities out there and but as you can see they all have these fields and so what we're sort of thinking about is it might be useful to sort of say what the guidance is for each of the packaging ecosystems for filling these fields out and starting to have that available for people who are making tools and trying to interpret these SBOMs as they're getting them. But that's one idea. Um, certainly are interested in any ideas that anyone here has. So if there's any questions or something like that in the chat, um, we'd be interested in them until Nisha gives us a look and pulls us off. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thanks so much, Kate and Art. Um, there is a question in the, well, it's not really a question. Let me see if I can rephrase that. So what's the difference between uh, SPDX tags and the SPDX license expressions? Uh, so SPDX, um, the, I'm assuming that the Fedora has had their own set of license IDs for a long time now. And there's been some overlap, and a lot of them have been pulled into SPDX over time, and there's just a few more there still left. But the license ID work is ongoing to make sure it's unified so that the licensing can be expressed um, and it can be interpreted between the ecosystems. So I think that's what's I think that's what that one's referring to. But feel free to correct me if I misinterpreted things. But there's a pretty active group of lawyers that are sort of working on the license lists and so forth to make that all work together now. So yeah, I think you. Um, I have, uh, you know, I am very fascinated that there are so many um, formats for uh, 
publishing vulnerabilities is that something that is that something that uh, you think art uh, can be um, consolidated into a standard or is that is there uh, some external forces that are preventing that um it, it's a honestly a bit of a mystery uh, i've been been poking at that for pretty much 20 years um you know there's certainly a, 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 a there's there would, there would seem to be a need for a standard or a benefit of standardization um but whatever the driving factor is just hasn't hasn't come into play yet um we've got lots of different formats you know um things maybe are working okay maybe they're not um I, I i honestly just don't know the answer i suspect it's sort of a study of how standards and standardization works more than um like a domain specific problem uh um and you know you can insert the one more standard joke here right oh there's some stuff that already exists but we'll just we'll just make a new one um so i don't know the answer um you would you would think their standardization would help but um the pieces are not uh, not in place, I think. Yeah, th there's some work to basically say, here's a coordinate system, be it like you know the NBD or the yeah. you know Google or some or some you know projects bug system, and then an ID afterwards, and at least sort of standardized on something like that, which we could then put into these you know bill of materials, put references, and to draw the linkage tighter when it's known. But um, yeah, yeah. My my hope also is if, if we can at least get get good reference or good reference system that might help, but um, uh, mm -hmm. a lot of variety in the actual formats themselves. Yeah. Thanks for answering my question. Here's oh. another question. <laughs> um, it Would a command be uh, helpful uh, for generating an SBOM um, in a package manager? I think yes. so. Yes, <laughs> definitely. Yes, and um, happy to uh, <laughs> happy if any questions come up in trying to do it, and happy to you know include in various you know doc fests and plug fests and so forth like that to make sure that we get everything up. But yes, please. Um, one of the things um, the Octo um, community has gone and added in some um, ability to start generating SPDXs out of their builds. Um, the Zephyr project um, has when you do a build of a binary image you can generate an s-bomb out in fact you're generating four s-bombs out but that's another dis discussion um, for from the build and so there's various places that are starting to do it so there's existence proofs out there but we, if we could get it happening in every build ecosystem that there's just an option to generate this that would be wonderful because that would give us a lot more truth out there to work from Okay, I'm going to ask another question. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, I I know that like as far as packaging ecosystems are concerned, we have like uh, we basically uh, delegated the creation of packages to uh, folks who are um, folks out there in open source. Um, in what way can you uh, kind of uh, uh, encourage folks out there who are working in open source to generate this information uh, so that other people can use it? Um, if they are tired of answering questions about what license a file is under or a package is under. If they generate an SBOM, they can be authoritative as part of their release process. Ideally, some of the upstream projects, if we can get them to have on every release, generate an SBOM of the sources, then when people build from them, they can refer back to an authoritative source and we actually have a source of truth. Um, right now, um, as we sort of work our way back, it becomes more and more ambiguous. And then you know, connecting it to the actual sources there's even more so in certain cases and when we really have to trace the vulnerabilities back down to the source file level. Um, that's, you know, kind of where we need to do for automation eventually. <laughs> so it's, it's, it's a goal, but hopefully what will motivate people to do it is if we all do a little bit, the thing will happen. Um, but what we're sort of want to make sure is, you know, as we're doing it, if I'm caught, I'm referring to some version 
number. Um, and I look at your code that you've given me and saying, you know, this version is this, we have a way of making sure we do understand each other. And that's part of the reason we have things like hashes too. Art, do you have any okay. thoughts? I know very briefly, uh, all of this SBOM generation stuff is going to have to be integrated into tooling. So build tools, packaging tools, all that stuff. It'll get there. Um, we're not asking people to make these by hand and double the amount of work they have to do. Yeah. yeah. Okay. We'll leave it there. Thanks so Thanks. much, Kate and 